fellow Vikings, welcome back. This time we're going to talk about summertime showers. So, now that you've seen how we get water from the creek, um, and pump it up the hill and do all that nifty stuff. Um, how do we take a shower in the summertime without wasting good drinking water? So this, this, it's a lot easier of a question than most people might think. All right. Um, yeah, some people might not want to shower outside and all that. And I, I get that. But right now, the way everything's set up, if we want to take a decent shower, Oh, sorry for my finger. That is so unprofessional of me. <laughs> but um, for us to take a, a nice shower and a hot shower, all right, I had to do a couple things. All right, the Rainies came over here a couple years ago and put a uh, put the large black container that we use to transfer water for the um, uh, for the the goats and the the garden and all that. They put uh, that and a. Uh, 55 gallon drum up on the hill and everything and it would collect the solar and radiate down you know and get nice and toasty but i found a slightly better way yes that works it does but i wanted it to be a little bit hotter so i did this plenty of water it goes down across like this back and forth on the roof so it heats up crossing over Comes from over there, wraps around the tree so it suspends in the air, so we're not stepping on it. And it comes over here. This hose goes to the goat, and it hooks up right here. This one here turned on, goes up into this beautiful bucket here that the rainy's hooked up. Comes straight on down. Yeah, it's 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 pretty simple, you know. It just kind of wiggles back and forth on top of a uh, tar roof. You know a standard uh roof and that roof gets hot like really hot um and then during like during the day the sun's directly on it there's a period of time for about 40 minutes or so of when the uh actually it's, it's a little bit longer about an hour about an hour maybe two uh depending on what time of year we're talking here or what time of summer we're talking here because uh um right around the solstice all right uh there's an extremely long period of time where it the entire system is in direct sun whereas uh closer towards uh the beginning and end of summer um it's it's a uh, it, there's a lot more shade over us and all that so it's a little more comfortable um but the hose travels back and forth on top of the roof as you saw it goes over into the uh the bucket and then that's right over the shower or right over the bathtub so that we're able to uh take a nice warm shower it actually gets hotter than you think right it's uh hot enough when you have it on full bore that it uh it's it's comfortable it's like just like a normal shower um if you turn it off like so okay check it out i'm i'm, I'm doing a really bad job here uh but you that that little bucket right there right this little bucket let's flip around here that little bucket right there okay so that little bucket there has uh the ability to hold a few gallons all right if you have it on for the uh entire time that bucket's going to fill up and overflow so we don't do that but if you have it on uh enough to almost fill the bucket you're going to have a cooler shower than if you turn it on for about a minute and uh then turn it off and it'll, it'll run for about four or five minutes after you uh um turn it off that and it'll stay warm like that and the water inside the hose will heat up and then you turn it back on and when it's starting to to, to dribble down a little bit and uh it'll it'll be nice toasty water on you the, the entire time of shower and, and it works it works really well um and again this is using the creek water so that we're able to uh shower without wasting good drinking water all right um i do treat the uh the we call it the rain not rain creek water I, I do treat the creek water so that my goats can drink it without getting parasites and stuff um but i'd rather not drink that if i don't have to and right now i don't have to 
right? I've got wonderful neighbors who give me good drinking water, so I would much rather use that well water to drink with any other any any day, any day, all right? And uh, use creek water and and rainwater for everything else, all right? As much as possible, I want to set up a system for my uh, um, wash machine to run on rainwater and creek water and pond water, so I'm not having to. Uh, waste uh drinking water but right now because that the washer machine's plugged into our standard house setup right now it's running off of a system for our drinking water so we have to monitor how much laundry we do and uh that that's part of why i smell because i'd rather drink water and wear uh the same pair of shorts and a shirt for a few days you know i'd, I'd rather do that and have water that that uh, so, I mean, I know my neighbors say I could come over and get water whenever I want and all that, you know, but I'd rather not take advantage of people as much as possible, right? They are great, kind people, and I know that it costs them money to run that pump and to fill up my water tank, so I, I want to not use them as much as possible. But uh, as for, like taking a shower there's no reason why you can't wa wash up with creek water if you clean it and everything it makes it really easy you know and it, it's not wasteful it costs like pennies literally pennies for us to run the vehicle and go over pump some water and bring it up here and pump it on the hill it's it literally costs pennies for us to do that so i mean that that to me is the most efficient way of of having water that we can use that doesn't necessarily have to be drinking water you know um ah it's a hot day so because it's such a hot day i think i'm gonna leave this one a little bit shorter and i'm gonna go take a shower because i hooked that thing up and i do smell um i did talk about uh smelling just a couple minutes ago and being all stinky funky with a couple days wearing a shirt and stuff well um let's put it like this Shower day, clean clothes day. Shower day, clean clothes day, go to town day. Just got to plan your day out a little bit better so you don't stink as bad in town. Though I just, I still get looks. I'm an ugly little dude. I mean, I get those looks. Like, bro, take a shower. I'm like, I did. You don't, you don't know what. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you get, you get used to that kind of stuff. But, um, people here are actually pretty darn good they they tend to be understanding and all that and like i mean we, we live a certain lifestyle and a lot of people around us live like that too so it's it's a it's a little bit more understanding and you know what i want to give this up for nothing i mean i lived in the city or i grew up in california right the way i live is illegal in california um so i would rather smell than be forced to live the way someone else tells me if that's if that's the price then i mean that's that's not bad i mean i i have some of the best food in the world right like straight up like think about it like this right how much do you pay inside of a store for uh organic free ranged like truly free range where the animal is able to just walk wherever it wants all right uh free ranged um uh, grass fed or grain fed, you know, uh, meat. How much does that cost in the store? All right. That, that's quite a bit, right? My eggs, like if I collected up, uh, uh, a dozen eggs, you're, you're going to the store, you're paying quite a bit for that. You're paying like $6 for my dozen eggs and all that, uh, because of how organic and all the buzzwords, you know, I mean, that's pretty darn good. My, my, my garden, I grow all of my fertilizer, on my property all right i have goats i have chickens i have rabbits i have comfrey i grow my fertilizer on my property that's you don't get much more organic than that all right um the closest thing to a pesticide i use all right is uh, a little bit of dish soap dish soap and then wash off the the food and all that that's the closest thing to a pesticide other than that i'm out there squeezing little bugs i mean you don't get like much more buzzwordy than living like this, you know? And so I'm like, it's, it's a trade off here. I could either spend all of my time working my butt off at a job that I hate, you know, 
uh, and then go spend that money that I earned uh, to go buy this better food. Or I can live on my land. I can raise my own chickens and make sure they have a good life. All right. I can put them in the freezer and, you know, make sure they die humanely and not like in, 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 in conditions that they're not used to. All right. I mean, uh, right now you go to the store, you buy some beef, all right. That cattle was put into a vehicle that it's not used to being in. All right. Transported with a whole bunch of other cattle that it may or not, may not know into a holding pen that has cattle that it may or may not have have lived with its entire life inside of an environment that's never been in before in a situation that it's never been in before and it's running down uh through shoots and everything like that for it to be put down and even though it's a humane way to, to kill something or it, it's a decently humane way to kill something you know it's it's a lot uh it's somewhat painless you know even no matter how painless you get with that all right, you're still putting that animal through a lot of stress, all right? Whereas my animals are used to me petting on them every day. My animals are used to me loving on them every day. And the only difference between when I put them down and when uh, when, when I'm just picking them up and, and all that and loving on them, the only difference is the last couple seconds that they're alive, all right? Chances are, all right, they're going to be just as calm as any any other time and every time I, I've, I've i've put an animal down i try to make sure they're as calm as possible right and as yeah you, you can't beat this life i say this all the time you can't beat this life all right if you're going to eat meat all right and you're not part of the, the food chain if you haven't been there like if your hands haven't been there like inside of the blood and everything like that like you just killed the animal and everything like that then th you don't have anywhere near as much of an appreciation for what happens in that animal's life uh, than someone who's, who's there hands-on, okay? If you've never done it, then you just don't know what it's like, all right? And I tell you what, I appreciate every piece, every ounce of meat I have in my freezer, all right? Uh, yeah, I need a shower. I smell. I mean, the sun's going down. I said this would be quicker, and, or a quick one, and it's not. It's a normal one, but uh, sun's going down. The, the hose is cooling off, so I'm going to get in the shower, and I'll see you guys later.